Thank you for attending today's employee webinar training on workplace harassment. The goal of this training is to help employees identify harassment, the progressive nature of harassing behavior, and how to file a report for harassment. One thing that I want everyone to understand is that putting up with harassment is not just a part of having a job. You do not have to put up with it. It's not okay for someone to bully or degrade or sexually harass you. Every employee has a right to work in an environment free from harassment. And if you are in a situation where you're being picked on or someone is making sexually charged comments, you need to report it immediately. We can't stop what we don't know about, but I promise if you report it to personnel, the harassment will be stopped. This training will last less than 45 minutes, but I promise that you will learn something and that something that you learn could be the one thing that saves your job. The first thing we're going to talk about is Madison County's harassment policy. We are required by law to provide every employee an environment that is free from harassment and investigate all claims and reports of harassment and take disciplinary action when necessary. Fortunately, here in Madison County, this is not a problem that we have um, have to deal with a lot, and that's because of the great folks that we hire um, and the level of respect that employees have for each other. But what is sexual harassment? Sexual harassment is defined as unwelcome sexual advances or physical conduct of a sexual nature. The key word there is unwelcome behavior. It is important to remember that an employee may view and perceive conduct and remarks differently than yourself or they might be more sensitive to certain behaviors or language. Therefore, we ask you to please remain professional at all times. And let me give you an example of that. Patting someone on the back or rubbing their arm or shoulder might be okay between you and a coworker that you have known for a long time. But if you did that to a new employee, they might view that as unwelcome and inappropriate touching. Harassment is all about perception. And you need to understand that what is acceptable to one person might not be acceptable to someone else. The best advice that I can give any employee is to remain professional at all times and always, always keep your hands to yourself. There are two types of sexual harassment. The first type is quid pro quo, which literally means this for that and usually involves a supervisor offering employment benefits as a result for participating in sexual favors. This is not as common, but it does happen. The second type is hostile work environment, which is the more common type of harassment and involves an employee being subjected to unwelcome sexual advances that make the employee feel uncomfortable to the point that they are unable to complete their job. Since hostile work environment happens more frequently, I wanted to give you some examples of actions that get employees in trouble, like pressuring a coworker for a date, or making offensive remarks about looks, clothing, or body parts, touching someone, telling inappropriate jokes, or hanging sexually suggestive material in your work area, using racial words or phrases, or telling racially charged jokes, or making negative comments about someone's age or religious beliefs. My advice to you is to keep the inappropriate jokes and comments that, that you find funny at home and away from work. You never know when someone is going to take offense to something that you say. You know, what may seem innocent and okay to you may be viewed as offensive to someone else. Now let's talk about the progressive nature of unwelcome conduct. When an employee is determined to get the attention of someone that they are attracted to, sometimes they will, make, they will take extreme and progressive action in order to get their attention. Do you see how the behavior on the screen has progressed as the harassment has continued? If the behavior goes unchecked, it will only get worse and progress to the point of the harasser trying to physically touch the coworker. So when should the harasser be told to stop the progressive behavior and where do we draw the line on unwelcome conduct? Well, if the employee will tell the harasser to stop before the behavior goes too far or notify personnel, the conduct will not progress forward. 
It may take weeks or months for the harasser to progress to physically touching the person. A harasser will try to see how much is tolerated by the person and how much they can get away with before going to the next step. Harassers rarely start with inappropriately touching someone. They usually start with flirting and making comments to see how far their victim will allow them to go before moving on to the next step. Again, they want to see how far you will let them go before being told to stop. If someone's behavior is making you feel uncomfortable, tell them to stop. And if it continues, then you need to report it to personnel immediately. As I said in the opening, we can't stop what we don't know about. But we will put an end to any harassment when it is reported. If you're, if you're listening to this training and someone has told you to stop harassing them, then you need to stop immediately. Because if you continue, the consequences are much more serious. <clears throat> there are many types of harassment, and what I have listed for you on the screen are just some examples. Our current society seems to be more easily offended by anything that makes them feel uncomfortable. And I said this earlier, but it's worth repeating. Be very careful and think before you say or do something. You need to know who your audience is, who is around you. Thinking about who is around you before you say or do something acts the same as a water filter does uh, for the water that you drink. Keeps you from saying or doing something that could turn out bad for you later. Let's talk about an area of harassment that most employees never consider as a possible problem, and that is third-party complaints. It usually comes as a shock to an employee who gets into who gets into trouble for harassment because a third party complained about their language or conduct. Because the third party wasn't the target of the language or conduct to begin with. They were just a bystander or a witness and happened to overhear your conversation or your joke. But all it takes is for one person to find your behavior or your comments or your conduct offensive and you're in trouble. Usually third party complaints happen when a couple of employees are standing around talking, maybe in a break room, uh, cracking jokes or having a conversation about something uh, that they probably shouldn't be talking about. And another employee or a customer or, or someone overhears that conversation and uh, or those jokes and takes offense to it. But even though that third party wasn't involved in the conversation, all it takes is for them to overhear it and be offended uh, and file a complaint and that's all it takes for you to get into trouble. Um, now a third party complaints against harassment, uh, if it's just a conversation uh, that probably shouldn't have been had, telling some jokes that were off color and, and shouldn't have been telling, those kinds of things rarely lead to immediate termination. But they could depending on the severity of the situation. So again, I caution you to uh, please think about who's around you, um, who's on your shift, um, who's working with you, and just remember that what may be okay for you to talk about with your friends at home or at the bar or, or somewhere else is not appropriate for you to bring to work uh, because you never know when someone's going to take offense to something that you say. I've listed on the screen some tips for, for preventing harassment and keeping yourself out of trouble. Uh, also, I recommend that you examine the coworkers that you tend to associate with. Uh, do the friends that, that you hang out with, do they participate in these kinds of activities? If so, they could get you into trouble. If you tend to be that person that goes along to get along and just to have friends, um, you could get into trouble. Because uh, I have seen employees disciplined simply because they were guilty by dissociation. So you need to look at the guys or, or that you're hanging out with at work um, and do they participate in these kinds of activities that we've talked about already. Um, if so, uh, you could be guilty um, just by associating with them and participating in that. So uh, you may want to look at that uh, to make sure that you uh, stay up out of that trouble. Actually, guys, it's very simple. If you show up for work every day on time, do the job you're asked to do, 
keep your nose in your own business, keep your hands to yourself, and then go home. We will pay you every other Friday. It's just that simple. The most important thing we will discuss in this training is the process of how to report harassment. Claims of harassment and investigations will be handled by the personnel department. We are obligated by law to investigate all claims of harassment. There is no chain of command requirement for harassment. I'm going to repeat that. There is no chain of command requirement for harassment. If any of you listening to me right now are being harassed or you know of a coworker that is in a harassment situation, please contact the personal department immediately and we will take action to stop the harassment. Let's talk about retaliation. Sometimes employees are reluctant to come forward with a claim because they're afraid they will lose their job. I want everyone to understand that if you turn in a complaint for harassment, you will not be retaliated against. No employee will be disciplined or terminated for shedding light on a harassment situation. But I do need to say that if an employee makes false claims, and I said false claims or allegations of any kind, they could face disciplinary action. But we do not want any employee to fear retaliation as a reason for not alerting us to a situation that we need to be made aware of. Uh, this does happen a lot where an employee will be afraid to come forward, afraid that um, they will be terminated, afraid they'll be disciplined, afraid they'll be um, kind of an outcast, that they will lose their friends. Uh, but please understand that we're not going to take this for reaction against anyone um, who makes us aware of a harassment situation. As long as that employee gives us um, the correct the correct information and doesn't uh, make up false allegations and false claims. Um, so we just want everyone to understand that it is okay and we encourage you to come forward but please come to personnel if, if there's something that we need to know about. So in summary, make sure you are professional at all times while at work. Keeping inappropriate comments and opinions away from the workplace. And remember, there is no chain of command when it comes to reporting harassment. You can come directly to the personnel department to submit a claim. All employees are required to complete this training. To receive credit, request a training, training certificate from your supervisor. Your supervisor will collect the certificate from you and sign it to acknowledge your completion of the training. This completes our harassment webinar training for the day. I want to thank you for your participation. And remember, if you ever need help, the personnel department will be glad to provide any assistance to you that we can. Thank you.